Remember? You tell me. Okay, so we were talking about polarization. And um, I promised you a video on polarization of water. I said that water was a polar molecule. You seen this one? Okay, good. So then you don't get to comment on it. Okay, because you're going to give away the game. Yeah. So they have a little cup. They fill the cup up with water, and it comes out in this nice little stream. And you can do this at home as well. Um, Isabel was like, oh, are they going to put a magnet to it? They're not going to put a magnet to it because they're going to show electric polarization. And they're going to put something else to it. So they're going to put a rod and rub it on her head to charge it. If you have hair, that works. This would not work for me. And then she's going to put the rod close to it. Okay. Which way is the water going to deflect? Away from the rod. So I have a, I have a vote for this direction. Okay. So the rod is here. Is that correct? Okay. We have water. We have a hole. The water comes out. Oh, yeah. Let's make this a hole. Okay. A little hole there. Water comes out in a nice thin stream. As it comes out in the nice thin stream, she's going to take this rod here. And she's going to rub it on her hair. Does that make sense? That'd be so funny if I put this screen down and I was just writing on the screen. Um, so when she does that, she's going to charge the rod. Okay. Then she's going to place the rod in this location. And my question is, which direction, if any, will the stream be deflected? Well, then we need to know what charge is on the rod. So how far... That's not my question. Which direction, if any, will the rod be deflected? So I heard one vote for away. You want towards? Let's do a different one. Okay. So now we have all of the possible directions, right? So raise your hand for deflected towards. Okay, raise your hand for not deflected. Raise your hand for deflected away. Okay. Let's find out. Bring it close to the stream of water. Oh. The water is attracted to it. That's because water molecules are polar molecules. Water molecules look a little bit like Mickey Mouse. Okay, so what happened? The two towards. So you made a comment about, well, it matters what the charge is on the rod. Is that true? Why is that not true? Oh, because it's a... What? What does that mean? Because they're polar. Are they... Let her finish. Let her finish. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, let's think about this in the context of the water, right? Here's the water, okay? Let's say there's a plus side and a minus side. <clears throat> let's say, let's imagine, okay? And the rod we're going to charge using our hair, if we have any, okay? What is that going to do? What, what, what charge is this going to give it? Negative, correct. Okay, so this is all negatively charged. Okay, now I bring the rod close to the polar molecule. What happens? Yeah. Ah, right. So it doesn't matter what the charge on the rod is because these are free to move. So they'll either rotate plus towards or minus towards. But either way, whether you charge it positively or negatively, it's going to be attracted to the rod. Does it make sense? It's just going to, you said it's just going to rotate. To it's free to rotate, right? It's liquid. Yeah. Right. Now, we, if we're, not, we're showing something different, let's say we're showing polarization in an object, that could be slightly different. But these are free to move. Right? Okay. Good. Everyone's awake now. So let's talk about the um, effective and electric field on a dipole. We did this already. So we're just going to recap it for like two seconds, and then we'll talk about non-uniform electric fields. Um, what's the torque? What was that? R cross F. R cross F. Good. 
And so let's draw a little picture. You have some R, R like this, and you have F like this, okay? And you have some pivot point, right, theta? If you wanted to, you could do that cross product with the sine theta. I don't care. You can write that if you want. Okay. And if you have an electric field and you have a dipole, let's say this is R minus, then this is F in the opposite direction, minus F. Right? As you have some E field, and we're going to assume that it's uniform. Is there a net force? There is? Where? You show me the net force. Yeah, it'll be a problem. Sum of apps. So it'll be that, that F of um, F plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll be F plus one. I don't follow that. What does that equal? Mm -hmm. That's zero. Because this force and this force are the same but negative. So if you add them, the net force is zero. So there's no net force. But you're right that if this is a non-uniform electric field, that you will get an end force. I'll talk about that in a few seconds. Okay, but instead we have a do we do have a torque, right? By oh, what? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, you add this. Yeah. Um, track that. Yeah. Right? Same magnitude, different directions. Right. Good. Okay. Um, and we're, remember, what is the force on an electric charge? If you have a um, E field, you have a charge in an E field. Q, E. Good. So in this particular circumstance, we had a positive charge here and a negative charge here. That was the reason for the negative. So E is in the same direction, but this charge up here was positive, and this charge down here was negative. That is the only reason that the forces were net. Now, if you for some reason had a dipole with two positive charges on either end, right? You in fact would have a net force in the direction, right? So you would have net charge. See what sense? Okay, so this is all stuff you saw on Thursday. But let's talk about the torques. What was the torque in this circumstance in terms of uh, not R, but the dipole moment and the electric field. Okay, so we have the torque written here. That's R cross F. And I want it instead in terms of the electric field with something else. You know, that would be like if you wanted to talk about the cross product, and I don't actually care about that. Uh, what is P? Uh, P cross E. Good. What's P? The dipole moment. What's that? Yeah, good question. Good question. Can you figure it out? You have all the pieces on the board. You have it in your notes. You definitely did the homework, right? You went home and you did that problem that I assigned. You didn't just let it sit in your home in your book, right? So you do know what P is. It just it's morning, you haven't had enough coffee. I get it. So let's look. Let's look at the board and see if we can piece together what P has to do. What? We're writing it in terms of P. He's right there. Mm 
Yeah, would that be like, um, you guys can think of it. I got really good for it. So, you know, you know, along with that, you can do like the next one. Like, yeah, I mean, we could look at it, right? So we could say, okay, we had R cross F, okay? And the F was QD, QE, and there's the E. So what's missing is the Q, right? So we could bring the Q, that's in fact a constant, so it won't exist in our vector quantity. Maybe that comes to the front. And is the quantity QR sufficient? Yeah. In fact, we're going to call it QD. And that's going to be a vector between the two charges. That's the dipole moment. Okay. So the dipole moment is zero when there is no separation between the charges. The dipole moment is zero when there is no charge. Pretty straightforward, right? All this is saying is that if I have charges that are separated, okay, the dipole moment will be larger for larger Qs and larger Ds, separations. Okay? So another way to think about this is as we open this door, okay, it's easier to open the door by pressing where the handle is than it is to press where the hinge is, because the lever arm is larger. We saw that from hydrogen compared to lithium, hydrogen had a smaller dipole polarization, right? It was less able to be polarized compared to lithium. Lithium was a larger atom, and therefore the charge distribution is arranged in a way that you can twist lithium more easily. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the ability to be polarized, right? We say that in the context of something like, um, I think it's like this or something. Yeah. That the, the, the you know, it's polarizability. This is the polarizability. This is an, in, okay. an intrinsic property of the atom but, that you measure in a laboratory. This yeah. isn't a first principles of calculation. Yeah. Those two are the same or the same? Yeah, they're the same. Yeah, and so you'll notice when you do the homework problem that I assigned on Thursday, mm -hmm. that in fact, you'll be using this fact. You're just trying to get the, the results to look something like this so that you can go back and extract what this is based on what you know about this and what you were able to measure about this. Okay? And if you have questions on that, of course, we have a um, student help session today and tomorrow. Okay, so in the circumstance where you don't have a uniform field, okay, let's imagine So now I add my dipole in here. All right. Is there enough force? Yes. Why? Right. So there is a net force. Is there a torque? Yes. Probably. Yeah. I, I haven't created this so that it exactly balances. Wait, well, I guess it's like a dumb question, but is this no such thing? If the charges, if one is greater than the other one, then the electric field is also. So, like, I guess it's like an equilibrium. Type. Yes, yeah. So you could imagine a situation, right, where you have N is the torque from one plus the torque from two, right? So if, for example, N, which is Q, um, R, E, essentially, right? And this is E1, Q1 plus Q, R, E, E2, E2. So maybe you have this one is two times that one, but this one is one half this one. You could imagine a world like that, but I didn't do that. It's just a thought experiment. Okay. 
Okay, so in a non-uniform field, you're going to have um, a balance. Oh, sorry, you're not going to have the balance of the net force and torque. Um, you usually don't run into this in dielectrics. So this is just uh, mentioning it for um, the purposes of understanding all of the different scenarios. Um, e fields typically don't change across a single atom, right? They're, they tend to be larger scale than that. Um, what if you have lots of atoms? Because right? what we're going to try to build to is a conceptual understanding of how matter works, because this chapter is electrostatics in matter. I feel like I'm, I guess I'm a little confused on like the diagram. We're trying to show an atom, right? Like this is this is what this is trying to show. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so let's 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 imagine that again. How do I go from this picture to the atom? Okay. Uh, so let's, what's our favorite atom? No. <laughs> that could be your favorite atom because you love quantum mechanics more than this class, but what's our favorite atom? Water. Very good. Why do we like water? Polar. Because it's polar. You just took fluids. I'm literally always drinking water. Okay. So what does water look like? Big O, two little O's, or Mickey Mouse, right? Okay, so there's a positive sign and a negative sign. Okay. And they're separated by some distance. See that? So the separation between them is and you can say 2R, but that's not what I'm asking. Two R, let's think about normal circles. D. Yeah. U D. Polar. You see now? So when you see this, you see a water molecule. The charge is not distributed perfectly like this, right? But remember, that's not really how we think of charge at all. Charges aren't really point charges in the same way that we think about them. They're more like, and eh, charge is like heading over there kind of-ish. So the positive charge is hanging out here kind of-ish, and the negative charge is down here kind of-ish, right? And we're gonna treat them like they're little rods with sticks on them. It's all, of course, wrong, but we have to start somewhere. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> Um, yeah. If you had watched the video at the very beginning, you would have seen it. What's the new motto? On time is late. That's right. Okay. So in fact, um, you'll see at the very beginning, there's a beautiful video where even though I promised to do this, I don't have a wet lab, but you can do this at home. You take a rod. What do you do? Everyone who watched the video? Rub it on your hair if you have it. Okay, that does what to the rod? Charges it negatively, and then you place it next to the water, and the water is bend towards it, always towards it. All right, so we're going to talk about this in the context. Remember, we're going to take like a big view of this, and we're going to look at how all of the matter works. Um, I don't know if I really want to do this. So I have this example, right? And it's got math on it. And I've been having a hard time this weekend preparing for this class because has anyone here had to learn cursive? Okay, how often do you use cursive? Do you think you'll ever use cursive ever again? No. So I feel gypped, right? Because I had to learn how to write all my shit in cursive and like full essays. We didn't have computers when I, I mean, we did, but we didn't write. In, we, no one had like personal computers at home, right? We were like writing out all your shit on your personal laptop. You like had a computer with your family. And so I'm like, okay, how much of what we teach today is useless, right? Just useless. And I think some of the integral expressions will not be useful. And I think generally speaking, how to set up the problems, how to attack the problems is something 
like having this intuitive sense of like, oh, I should use this technique or I should use the method of images. These are all things that I think will be really important. So I've included, for example, 4.6, which will be one of your homework problems. We'll talk about this later. We're not gonna do it today. Um, that one you'll do completely on your own. Um, we're gonna try and do one, I think, which is 4.11, but um, let's see if I have it here. I think, I think we just gloss right over um, these examples with individual dipoles or no? Do you want to see an example of individual dipole? Is that well, remember that dipoles are polarized molecules, right? That's the way we're just thinking about them in the same way. Because I can talk to you about, you know, what it looks like inside of matter. But if you're really feeling like this is very sketchy, I don't get it, show me more. We have a nice little example. This is good. Raise your hand for this is good. Raise your hand for example with math. OK. Um, Rolanda, why don't we do this um, today in the student help session? Um, OK. So let's. I was just going to ask, like, what did I didn't get off the table? Yeah. That's <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this um, property of matter, okay? So here is a really good drawing of a piece of matter. Okay, yeah, let's do rock, All right? Rock is matter, okay. Um, polarization is defined as the dipole moment per unit volume. Now you'll notice this P is a capital P, right? You'll notice that right away. It's not a little P. That's a joke, you can't notice that. Okay, um, so we know what dipole moments are now? Per unit volume, okay? So what does this look like in practice? Well, you're gonna have all your little dipole moments in the matter and they're gonna point in the same direction. Okay, so when they line up, the material is polarized. You might have, let's say that's one section. You might have a different section in here. Okay, and you look in this section and you say, well, that material is mostly polarized. Right? So polarization here can be a degree of polarization. That is to say, completely unpolarized, none of these individual dipole moments in the same direction versus all of them in the same direction between zero and one, essentially. Does that make sense? Yeah? How do they make magnets? Mm -hmm. Are all of the little dipole moments like the same direction and not the side? Yeah. So those are magnetic dipoles, but we're going to use the analogy here because um, I'm going to show you something cool in a video in two seconds. So here you have the entire material. It is a metal, and you can align the moments so that they're all going in the same direction. Yeah. I actually, actually accidentally uh, polarized my pocket knife because I always have it in my pocket and then it warped because there's enough energy for all of it. Yeah, so that's something you can do. You can also do this with, um, if you're using a screwdriver, you can just like rub it on a magnet and then you polarize the end of the screwdriver and then you can touch screws and pick them all up. Um, how do you depolarize something? What? How do you mix up metal? How? How? We can just like rub the magnet all over the place on the screwdriver. Uh, so depends. So sometimes if you rub it on the body, it will demagnetize it. But if you rub it on the tip, you will magnetize it. And now we're not going to get into it. But generally speaking, how would you demagnetize something? Heat. What does heat do? Say that again. 
Yeah, so you put energy into here. You make them able to move. Remember that every atom sits inside of a lattice. And when you melt a metal, it becomes a fluid, right? So you don't have to melt the metal, but if you give it enough energy, they'll move in their lattice and they'll become unstructured. Okay, so watch this. Let's do... Uh... This is why we have double video today. All right, let's go. <laughs> Wait. Be magnetized with fire. Okay. Oh, shit. Sorry. You can't see that. But you can see that, right? Yeah. Ish. Okay. This is a screwdriver. This is a magnet. This is a flame. <laughs> okay, so what they're doing here is they're heating up the magnet and it falls off. Right? So what's happening is that the magnet originally has all of its individual atoms mostly in the same direction, such that it has ferromagnetic properties. And then you give it enough energy that those individual atoms start pointing whatever way they want. They get excited by the fire. Okay, and then it falls. And if I pick it back up and it's cooled down, will it be magnetic again? No. no. It's stuck now. Now you ruin your magnet. Is it all lost? No. No, no as well. Not all is lost. We can, in fact, redo it. How do we do it? It's cool. It's cool. I, I picked up my hand. I'm not crazy. Put it in another electric field, which will polarize the atoms again, send them in a certain direction, and then we can freeze it. Okay, so you put it next to a really strong electromagnet, boom, now you have a magnet. Okay, that's how magnets are made. Magnets are not just found in the ground. I mean, some of them are, but not most of them. Okay, all right, that makes sense? Okay. Oh God, what am I trying? All right, stop this. Okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about this um, uh, in detail. We can think of this as, you know, this is sort of the um, definitional way of viewing it. But we could say something along the lines of P vector is really the sum of the individual charges um, and their dipole moments, okay? So that means that if I look at some distribution of charge, um, and maybe you'll do this on a homework, maybe you won't, you'll have a bunch of individual atoms and you'll find out what the sum of this vector is by looking at the individual components. That's reasonable, right? Right. We know that individual moments sum, just like individual forces sum, because they're vector quantities. Okay, so what if it's a continuous, yeah. Um, is that a polarization or is that a vector? Um, these are the, we're using, we're using this P kind of interchangeably here. Yeah. This is not just the dipole moment. This is the um, dipole moment of the material. Right. Yeah. So this is for a collection. This is like the dipole moment of the system. And we're going to call them like, this is collection of individual point do dipoles, dot, dot line, dot, dot, line, dot, dot, line, right? And then we're going to think about the analogy to a piece of metal. So if this was continuous, what would you do? An integral, right? This is discrete. An integral is continuous. So you'd say something along the lines of the integral. integral of P R P R and this will be over the volume. Okay. Okay. Um all right, slow it down. That's fine. 
So to understand the effects of a dielectric outside of itself, you're going to use some uh, mental gymnastics, okay? So let's imagine that you have some object. That's a dielectric, not a conductor. Um, it has a bunch of polar um, molecules or atoms, whatever, distributed inside of here. And we are going to give it some effective phenomena so that we can describe it with the electrostatics that we know and love. So we're going to call two different things. We're going to say that there is an effective surface charge. Does the word effective make sense to folks? So effective is like, um, if you say something is effectively that way, you're saying it's not really that way, but for our purposes, it is, right? So the surface charge is going to appear this way to an outside observer. And in particular, when we look at this object from far away, it will look effectively the same as something with that charge. Does that make sense? Now, if you looked on the microscopic level, you'd see that it in fact was different. Does that make sense? And we'll show an example of this in a few seconds. So this will be the effective surface charge. And that's gonna be sigma B is equal to P dot N. Okay, and then a volume charge. is going to be rho okay um these are usually written without the prime and you're just expected to know that <laughs> sorry <laughs> um but you're going to differentiate with this respect to the coordinates that are appropriate to the system okay oh this is like not even helpful maybe i'll move this thing That works. Hello. Yeah, you may or may not be able to see it. All right. Um, okay. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about moving from a version of matter and okay, um to like a real version of matter to one that is an assembly. Of dipoles. The one that has equivalent sigma and rho. Surface and volume and charge density. Right? That process makes sense in our mind why we're making this choice. Let's say I want to describe the electric field outside of a polarized dielectric. Right? Then that would be really helpful since you already learned how to do this with conductors. You know, you could just say, oh, well, I can use this law, that law, and I'll just treat it like it has an effective surface charge of seven or eight, or whatever you want, right? Okay, um, let's look at a picture here. Let's imagine that you have uniform polarization inside of this box, okay? Um, I'm gonna draw lines. These are not electric field lines. Okay. So these are the polarization vectors inside of the material, okay? So let's look, let's imagine this is a perfectly two-dimensional material. How is the charge distributed? Uniform. Is it? On the outside? So let's do volume, or let's do surface first. It's if it's two-dimensional. Yeah. I would say yes. Okay, okay. let's let's start here. Let's start. How is the charge distributed here? So these are individual dipole moments. What are the dipole moments mean again? It's uh, positive and negative. With some separation. 
right? So these are representing each one of these polarized, they go from which direction to which, which direction? Here they're going left, right? But if I think generally about a dipole moment, by definition, we say that they go from which charge to which charge? Oh, Positive. Negative to positive. Oh, oh, okay. Negative to positive. The electric field itself is doing the opposite. Yeah. The, the way that we wrote it was just QD, right? Okay. So here I can imagine that this is going from negative to positive, but I have a negative and a positive next to each other. So effectively that's zero. zero. So you were saying uniform charge, probably there's nothing inside the box. And I would agree with that. So this is all mostly gonna bounce, right? Inside of the box. But on the edges, it's gonna look a little weird. On this edge, what's it gonna look like? Zero two, right? Because it's along this row where this is balancing with this, with this, with this, right? They're all sort of canceling out. So there's almost nothing on this side, nothing on this side. Positive. Yeah, and then I have a bunch of positive charge on this side. And equal an equal amount of negatives on this side. I don't know if I did that right. Don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to. OK, so here we find that row B is 0. But that sigma b is not. Does that make sense? And this is the way that we can effectively. Is this just here? I don't know if it matters. You can see that, okay? Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't know why the inside is zero. Which one? Inside of the box. Inside of the box. Yeah. yeah. Um. So let's let's think about this picture again. So this is a negative charge, and that's positive, right? The negative charge. The charge. Positive charge. Is it like <clears throat> taking like take like the Gaussian surface of it? Is is it like that zero or why? Yeah, I mean this is a really bad approximation, right? Because on average in materials there's 10 to the 20 atoms, right? So really the separations here are very small. Oh. So these ones are very close to each other. And in general, the net charge in here is zero. That's not always the case. And we're gonna show an example of that not being the case in a few seconds. But generally what you end up with is an effective surface charge. Right? When I say effective is that this is basically approximating the material. It's not really how the charge is distributed. There's not really free charge on one side, but the way that it's polarized presents charge on the right-hand side versus the left hand side, right? No charge on this boundary. Let's look at one more example. Not really an example, but. All right, what if you have a sphere and you have non-uniform polarization inside of the material, okay? So again, these are not the E vector, these are the polarization vectors. That material makes sense to you? Different intuition of that material? You do? I don't have right away. Maybe we can work through this one. And those are the polarization vectors, right? Mm -hmm. Is this happening on the surface of the sphere or inside the sphere? This is a two dimensional sphere. Okay. This is a circle. Okay. I don't want a third dimension to complicate this. <laughs> okay. Is this solvable in any way, shape, or form? Do I have any tools to address this? Mm -hmm. Small chunks of it. 
Uh, do I have anything that I've written down that tells me how to get either this or this? Do the integration. I don't like integrals. I just told you that I hate integrals. I don't want to do them in class. So you should do if you say it's effectively neutral, or that's guessing, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I wrote the definitions for this, and there's math, so we could do the math, right? What does this mean? And the normal, normal of what? Uh, yes, surface. Oh, surface of whatever area you're taking. Okay, so let's look here. Okay, that would be n in which direction? Oh, good, right angle. We like that, right? So this is n. Oops, just kidding. That's not n. So you want to write torque that way. This is n. Okay, and then down here. Another also in okay so tricky right and direction okay and then the other one the divergence of these are dipole moments remember yeah so the divergence of the dipole moment and this is a minus sign because of how math works is good what was the divergent? What does it mean again? How much is spread out? Okay, so let's think about these two. I'm going to let you work with your groups for two seconds. Find a friend. Figure out if you can not calculate with numbers. So obviously, I didn't write anything down here. Whether or not these are positive, negative, zero. yeah so, so then you know like, if, if, if you dot so something like this, it's just zero. Then, then it's, yeah. that feels like a like a scalar value. Mm -hmm. So I think zero. Uh, I think I think when it's when it's uh, dotting in a perpendicular, I think there's zero. So, so, but they all would get in the process of the kind of that point. Yeah. Are these positive, negative, or zero? Right over here, I showed you this one. Zero. This one. Non zero. I drew the picture. You should be able to do the same for this picture. Not in not in nasty maths, but in feeling words. Does that make sense? Yeah. It feels like this is the way it should be because we're building the intuition. Understand what these derivations and how does each charge effectively represent itself okay, so on this object? So, so, like, let's say a really small that would be positive. Anyone else? But then you get some like maybe like this. Yeah. Where it's like that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh, maybe take like five minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Now, the answer is now. Where's the outline? I think it's kind of like the outline. But so you think of like how would you get to make it? It's fine. It is zero. Let's see what the line is. Non-slip. Right. 
So it starts in it starts in like yeah the value and that value varies and changes as it goes across your code. I guess it. It's changing. Right. I don't know what it looks like along the other edge. I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then everything else. Yeah, I don't know. Where else? I think it down. Oh, I would say it's a non zero. It has, it has, you know, zero things, right? Yeah, they're all like different lines. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 they're not going to be Yes, we don't have like only one of the day. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. People feel like they're at a good spot to start talking about this. Okay. The easy one would be surface charge. Okay, why do I say that's the easy one? Because I don't have to mess with the interior. Okay, so for me personally, I look at this and I say, oh, this is super straightforward if I'm just looking at the exterior of the circle. So why do I say that? Why is the exterior easy to look at? Yeah, you just have to think about the normal and the polarization vectors through the normal. So in this particular circumstance, I just walk around the surface and I'm gonna just start adding them up. So over here, I said, well, this entire length, and I didn't actually do it. Remember, I didn't actually say P dot N. I just said, oh, there's nothing going through. And y'all believe me, right? But there's a reason why. Well, look, all the polarization vectors, they are parallel to normal. So that dot product is of course zero, right? That's P dot N. Okay, so they're not aligned, so zero. It ends up with. So what about this one? In some instances, they will be, and other instances, they won't be. Okay. Yeah, we're on it. Would the surface uh, affect your surface charge the overall? Because what I'm seeing is that if it goes from, wait, uh, Moments, they go from negative to oh they go from negative to positive oh um can I change my answer to positive then because I forgot like the arrow um because I see like with the dipole moment um pointing towards like the towards like the outside um outline like it's like on the positive side what's the positive side the right side everyone likes the right side so let's do like uh this one's pretty normal. This one's pretty normal. This one's pretty normal. This one's pretty normal. This one's kind of normal. This one's not so normal. Yeah. So let's do like a small plus. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. This one's a big plus. This one's kind of sideways, a little baby plus. What about this one? Tiny bitty bitty plusy, right? Oh, and then this one is negative. Negative. Small. negative. So negative, negative, negative. What about this one here? Zero. Zero, so I'm gonna skip that one. Zero. Oh, interesting. So now I see the charge distribution. That's a very hand wave, okay? I just did this to demonstrate the idea, right? Okay, so this, not even, what's the hard one? We're looking at like the dipole moment diffusing across and going the entire circle. Um, diffusing is a word that we used in um, in fluids, but it's not quite appropriate here. It's all, you're almost on the right track. It's divergence, right? And divergence, we think of what's the analogy? Uh, spraying. spraying my brother with a hose, right? So the water's coming out of the hose, or have some anti-hose that's sucking the water in, right? So sources and sinks of that object. In this particular circumstance, we're looking for sources and sinks of polarization. 
So we look over here. We said this was zero. Is this diverging? No. Why is it not diverging? Well, yeah. It's not, like spreading out. it's not spreading out. What about this one? Yeah. You can see the spread. And so you don't even have to do a calculation. You know that this is not zero. You tell me? Uh, the divergence is positive or the charge density is positive? <laughs> Look how it's written. The divergence is negative. The divergence is negative and the charge density is, is positive. Right? It's just the way that you've written it. The, time. the sign is flipped. That's why we added the negative. So that in this circumstance, you're positive. Okay. Everyone feels super confident now, right? You're like super able to do this? Okay. So let's do another example. Uh, yeah, we might have enough space. I don't know. We're going to fucking win. All right. Um, let's do a uniformly polarized sphere. Okay. Now, um, let's see if I can write this in exactly the same way. We're going to find the electric field caused by this uniformly polarized sphere. Okay. Um, we're going to say that the polarization P vector is in that direction. We're going to set it up like this, like it's in the book. Okay. And then you have some angle theta and you have Z direction. So P is in the Z direction. And you have your normal. No one cares. Okay. That coordinate system makes sense to people. It's a sphere. So what's the polarization vector? Okay. Well, this is only in the which direction? Z direction. Z direction. Good. So it's going to be P in the direction of Z. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you the surface charge density. That's P dot N. What's that? Yeah, so this is a full sphere now. I, that's a perfect sphere. So don't look at it as anything but squish. Perfectly drawn, right? There's like competition between professors like who can make the most circular circle. I'll throw that at it. Wouldn't that be P dot into, or P, um, yeah, Good, which is in this coordinate system. Oh, that What's that? You're very close. I hear a lot of the right letters and words. Um, it's not like I thought it was like the skating or pizza. It's not intercosine. Yeah, okay. Right? Is that correct? Yes. What's cosine theta when theta is zero? One. So at this location, P is completely normal. And at this location, it's not, it's not normal. Right? Because the, remember, the polarization is uniform in this up-down direction. All of the atoms, all of the molecules, whatever you care about, polarize up-down. Ta-da! You did it. That was great. What about this one? Plus, let's see. Yeah. Here. Here, what? It's got there so quick. Ah, okay. So, you know, intuitively it should be zero, but can you show it mathematically? You're right. But can you show it? That's right. Okay. Minus rho dot p. Right? How do I write minus rho dot p in this circumstance? Oh, 
Do you see X's and Y's? Yeah, yeah. no, it, there's only Z that's Y. Partial with Z, partial with theta, partial with R. Yeah. Okay, so in spherical coordinates, we can't say, well, I don't see X's and Y's, because there is never no X's and Y's, right? You could write this if you want in that third dimensionality, but we're not going to have that here. Okay. And you know you already know this, so we're just writing it down for the sake of um, being pedantic. But uh, you have d d z dotted with p dot z, right? You only need to use the z components together. Is that correct? Okay. And the d d z of of a constant is what zero? Aha. Uh -huh. So your intuition was right. Yeah, I was like, so, even if we need to still wipe yeah, some of the cobwebs out of the, the map. Okay. Good. So we did it. Right? Right? Yeah. So we in fact know how to set up the charge distributions. We're not that worried about it. Now we can uh we can write some um Gauss's law or whatever else you'll need to do in order to find the distribution of the electric field. So this is in fact example 4.2 in your book. I would strongly recommend you go through it. But you now have a, a perfect understanding of the sigma and the rho charge densities, right? Surface and volume charge densities. And so now you know the charge densities. Now you can find the electric fields. We could work through this in detail if you want, but I really encourage you to follow along with what's going on there. It might even be a homework problem. No, in fact, we're going to look at a different one. Oh, no, Mateo, I hate when you do problems. <laughs> okay. Um, can I get rid of this? I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, this will be a home problem. Yeah. Is that your racist? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do whatever I've done before I erase it. Um, okay, so we are going to imagine a cylinder. Good. That's all. <laughs> um, this will be problem of 411 in your book. A short cylinder of radius A and length L. This is our homework problem. So. Yes, this is our homework problem. Yeah. Remember, we're going to have three that are due next Tuesday, one of which you already started in class. This one you'll start in class, and you'll do a third one without any prompting to demonstrate that you can do it yourself. You can work together, of course. I like when you work together. And, and we're still using ungrading in this class. So you turn in what you've done, I give you feedback on it, you get better at it, rather than just ignoring the homework until the last week. And this stamps no yeah. So for the ungraded policy, we're still doing the same thing as uh, uh, last year in Blitz with uh, the no, no, we had our own like notebook. No, no, we had our right, own notebooks. We don't have to do that. I mean, that was more useful in a class where we all had computers. Yeah. You can keep your own notes, you can work together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to see a lot of written work. Most of this work will be written work, right? It's a lot less conceptual. No one has an intuitive, you very rarely have an intuitive understanding of the We're going to try and build this one. Okay, short cylinder of radius A, length L carries a frozen in uniform polarization B that is parallel to the axis. Find the bound charge. You know bound charges? Charge on its surface, bound charge. Oh, okay. So find the bound charge. That's, sorry, I should have said that earlier. That's the B here, sigma B bound charge. Rho B bound What's bound by the material? Okay, so sigma B, find this and sketch the electric field for three examples. I, this is the first one, where L is much, much larger than A. You'll notice that I didn't finish drawing this because you were going to draw three different versions. <laughs> um, one, 
where L is much, much smaller than A, and three, where L is about the same size as A. Okay, so take, uh, oh shit, we're running out of time. Take less time than normal to talk to your friend, work out how to start this, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you So in this one, yeah, And remember, when we're working together right now, we're not just writing the math down, we're thinking about how to start the problem, <laughs> what words we're going to end up putting into our homework. If I see homework, which is only algebra, it will be returned immediately yeah. for no credit. Not even a stamp. That is not work. Thinking is not algebra. Thinking is words. So, right? Remember when Reed immediately got the right answer just because he knew it, not because he wrote the words down in, in math? That's how what I want you to do. I want you to have an intuition through your feels, not through. Dip, 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 dip. Yeah. Right? Because I think cursive will be gone in 20 years. That's my. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you can still do that in your own time. Sometimes proofs look really beautiful, but I don't know that we're going to have to show these proofs. I mean, think about how old this stuff is. This hasn't changed in 200 years. <laughs> Why do you have to slug through der these derivations? You should get an intuitive understanding of it so you can apply it. That's the whole point. What? Uh, why did you pick a mathematical proofs class? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I wonder. I'm going to teach math methods in the in the spring, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, did we get left alone? Who's missing? Oh. Uh, you want to jump in there, group? Or? Yeah. The bound is what you want to find. I want you to find find sand bound charge. For these three situations, what happens to you? Perfectly drawn signal. Yeah, the, does sigma change for each of these? That's the question oh. you want to ask yourself, right? No, that's the question you're asking yourself. I'm not telling you anything. I'm asking you to ask questions. 
So the bigger the but bigger the A is, the more the more how the the we build them. There will be three one design three like one to three like yeah. two. Yeah. 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 Because um but, you know, you're gonna have only four carpet that's a double double. So just think like our length of one and pave is a length of one. So the you would add on the same amount of like the nine like negative or positive. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if A was, you know, in this case, you don't know how to create an electric I thought that's the part of the tree. And then don't overthink this. Remember what we're talking about. If I gave you, right, let's here's the idea. If I give you, than what you would see like like this, electric. like this. Yeah. So, I guess the way that I think about it is yeah. more. If I give you that, yeah. can you All create this electric field? Yeah. 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 Ye
Larger than an L. It's like a circle. This, like a big like a dip, circle. Right? Like this. Yeah. That's my, yeah. Oh, my big wafer. Right? Because the reason that I'm drawing this is I already know that I'm going to need to draw that, that E field that I'm requiring of myself. Okay, what about if they're down? Like a soda can. Like a weird can of soup or something? A weird can of soup. There's no soup here. Make sense? These are the pictures. So now, what are the electric fields? So let's just make sure that we have enough time here to work through how we start this problem. Okay. What are we thinking about when we start looking at this problem? What what alarms go off in our head? No, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think about that right away. How do I know where to start this? What would be the P? Like, uh, I have a P, so I know that there's polarization involved. I'm looking for the bound charge. So I'm relating the bound charge to the polarization. Is that possible? Yeah. 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 So what is that? You dot uh, your polarization uh, into NBW, your normal vector. Good. So you already know how to start this problem, right? Yeah. Where do I have to care about this? Uh, surface. On the faces. On the, on the faces. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's uniform in the direction, the radial direction, right? The, sorry, if it's uniform along the pipe direction, that would be very different than if it were uniform in the radial direction, right? So this will have a positive and a negative side. Okay. It would be a completely different problem if all the polarization went radially, right? You'd be very unhappy with that one, right? Mm -hmm. Super upset. Super upset. Because then the charge distribution would be the effective all surface all charge would look like all around the tube and not positive. All around the tube and not on the edge and all positive. Good. Is that impossible to do? A uniformly charged positive tube? Yes. Isn't that impossible to do? That's not going to be harder. It's just going to be a different problem. Yeah. Right? Essentially, what I'm trying to do now yes. is I know that we all forgot about E and M1. But all of the solutions to these simple static problems, they exist. And there is a spectrum of results. 
we saw a positive and a negative, right? And we saw how to connect those field lines, okay? If I just add another one, right? Then it's gonna have a different field configuration that looks like a different dipole. We just know how to add these fields on top of each other. If I add another one here, a negative and a negative, okay? Now I'm sort of seeing a pattern. So I mostly have positives and mostly have negatives. Well, this kind of looks like something I've seen before. And this kind of looks like something I've seen before. And the space between them looks like something I've seen before. You see? So we're just building up this intuition for how all of these fields look. If I have two plates, they're very flat and very wide. What does the field look like between a positive and a negative plate? Or negative. Or it's negative. negative. Or the negative. So flat, uniform. Capacitor. Right? Outside, what does it look like? I don't know, something weird. Maybe we'll find out. Does that make sense? Okay. So your homework, and this is actually on the content schedule. Yeah, I wrote it down here. Is four two four six and four eleven? And if you need those problems, I can post them as well. Any questions, comments, concerns? 